extraordinary story. In 1944, Lily Ebert was taken from her home in Hungary to Auschwitz, the concentration camp. Tragically, her mother, brothers and sister were all killed. But incredibly, Lily survived. She's now 97 years old. And Lily has made another astonishing survival, having recovered from a dose of coronavirus. And Lily and her great-grandson, 17-year-old Dov, join us now. Well, I have to say, I feel honoured to be in your company, even virtually, Lily. How wonderful to see you and a very good morning to you. You are the great survivor. How are you feeling this morning? Thank you, I feel very well. Lily, you have had the most remarkable life. Um, but I wonder if we can just deal with recent history first. When did you get coronavirus and how bad did it get? It, I get it about three, four weeks ago. It, how bad it get. The worst thing is you get very tired with it. And you somehow, can you really not properly think? And well, Lily, Lily, you've had, you've had the... You've had the... I'm sorry, Lily, I wanted, I wanted to say you've had the first vaccine jab um, and you're waiting for your second. How excited are you to get the vaccination? Very excited, because I know how important it is. So I am excited to get it. Dov, I want to bring you in. Uh, your great-grandmother is a remarkable lady, isn't she? Yes, she really is. And good morning, Piers and Susanna. Thank you for having us on today. Um, she's really such a fighter and such an inspiration. And I think people love the tweet because it gives them such hope in such tough times. And my great grandma was really ill. And I'd just like to thank our local GP, Dr. Harvard, who checked up on her every day and oversaw her care. But she was a real fighter. And whilst there were some dark moments, the family was sure that she would continue fighting and never give up. I know that she describes it as, uh, as we've just heard, you know, the worst thing was how tired you get and you can get a little bit muddled in your in your mind, but she was actually on oxygen, wasn't she? And as you say, you know, I mean, when a 97 year old gets COVID, that's not an ideal situation. But the fact of the matter, Dov, is that your great grandmother is the definition of a survivor. What do you know as her 17 year old great grandson about your great grandmother's history? Yes, so growing up, I have heard my great grandma speak both informally and formally through amazing organizations like the Holocaust Educational Trust and Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. And so I always felt that I knew a lot about her story, but I always knew that it would also become my responsibility at some point because she isn't going to live forever. And the survivors, this really is the last moment to hear from Holocaust survivors like my great grandmother. So I, I wanted to use social media to share her testimony. And that's what I've been doing for the past six months because I wanted to continue her legacy of going to schools and organizations and speaking about her testimony. Because one thing that's always so important that she always says is the Holocaust did not start with the final solution in gas chambers. It started with basic anti-Semitic tropes and hatred. And we must all challenge the language of hatred every day and use our platforms such as social media to share Holocaust well, testimony. Absolutely. And Lily, you were just 14 when you were taken to Auschwitz from your home in Hungary. Uh, with your mother, your brother and your three sisters, and you never saw any of them again. You came through this, you spent four months at Auschwitz, uh, and you have lived a, a full life ever since, and you have a, a remarkable family. You have three children, 10 grandchildren, 34 great-grandchildren. Tomorrow is uh, Wednesday, the 27th of January, is the 76th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, and the theme is be the light in the darkness. How important has it been for you, despite this horror that you went through as a 14-year-old girl and losing so many of your family, how important has it been for you to always see a light after such darkness? It, it was very important. 
because you could choose. You could choose one thing. Choose life and carry on or give up. I choose the first part. I choose life and I said, I have not, the, I cannot give up. I have to carry on to fight. To fight that the world, because that is what I promised myself. If I, by any chance, I never believed it, that will happen. But if I survive, I will tell the world what it really happened. And I kept my promise. That is what I do. And now I am also, tell the world what can happen when we are not tolerant to each other. That is the main thing to understand when somebody is different than you are, is not worse or better than you, it is only different. And we should understand each other and live in peace with everybody. It's, a, it's a powerful message to hear from you, Lily. Before we let you go, tell us this remarkable story about uh, when the camp you were in was liberated, because a US soldier gave you a banknote, didn't they? And on it were in, he'd scribbled some words which gave you some light in the darkness. Tell us a little bit about that. It was like, it was when I get this banknote, really, I was very happy. Not with the banknote, it has no value in my life then. It was the first thing, kindness. Somebody gave me something, the kindness, and I appreciated it. And, but on the end, this banknote brought a lot of stories to life. And Lily, Many people around the world are going through unbelievable suffering from coronavirus, and many people have seen their freedoms uh, taken away from them to a large degree. Uh, but it's always important, historically, to have a perspective. You went through something in World War II which was beyond uh, any form of darkness. What is your message to people now who may be losing hope, who may be suffering, who may be grieving, and may be wondering, will this ever be over? What is your message to them about this virus? This virus is terrible. How it will end, we don't know. But we know only what we can do. We should never give up and try to do what we can try to how we can survive and be very careful to, with other people that nobody should, we, we, nobody should get it. How much we can to be separated with other, from other people that would help and we should do everything what we can that to help each other, that nobody should get this virus. And Lily Abert, you are a, re a remarkable lady, and it's an absolute privilege and an honour to have you on our programme this morning. It's fantastic to see that you've come through the virus just as you've come through everything in your life. Mm -hmm. You're an indomitable spirit, and your message is a powerful one for all of us. Thank you so much for being with us today. And Dov, you describe your great-grandmother as a light in the darkness, don't you? That's clearly what she is. Yes, she really is. And I was going to add to her message before, she had the vaccine and I just, I don't think we should get complacent. Even once you've had the vaccine, you can still um, get them in periods when, before you get um, immune. And she, she really is a fighter and a survivor, as I said on the tweet. And, she, I think she gives so many people hope in this tough time and it's just been amazing to learn so much more about her story in the past six months and it's just, 
she's just amazing and she's my inspiration. Well, you know, you knew she was amazing. And now thanks to the tweet, which we spotted and other people spotted and it went viral, we've now got a chance to see just how amazing Lily is. And she's even more amazing in real life. <laughs> so fantastic to have you both on the programme. Thank you, Lily, very much. Thank you, Lily, very much. Thanks. Thank you. It's great to see you both. Well done. Amazing. Fantastic what stuff. What an extraordinary story, extraordinary woman. To have come through that, imagine, 14 years old, and you get taken to Auschwitz and you lose most of your family. Yeah. And you've got a choice, as she said, in terrible times, mm. you know. Many people will be feeling helpless now about what's going on. You have a choice to either be positive and move forward through adversity. And my God, she had the worst imaginable adversity. Mm. Or you give up. And as she's, she's sitting there now, isn't she? 97, just survived coronavirus, never gave up. And that is 83 years after she was in that camp, probably thinking it was the end of her life. Amazing. That US soldier wrote on that banknote, the start to a new life, good luck and happiness. And my goodness, didn't she have some good luck as a result of amazing, that act Amazing of woman, that generation, honestly. Mm. I go on about them a lot, but they're a remarkable generation. Absolutely. They really are. The resilience and the power to be positive through such, in her case, appalling depravity mm. is just spellbinding.